The final thing we need to do with class diagrams is figure out how to implement them. Um, all this implementation we're going to be doing in Java because it's our core language, but you could implement them this way in virtually any programming language. Um, as a reminder, a useful implementation live coding video is there, um, but let's have a simple example. Um, let's start with a car class. So we, our class has a color and a price and a default value, which is what that equals 0.0, .0 is if you ever want to show a default value on a class diagram. And then we've got two getters for both of those values there with the uh, return types labeled clearly and the parameter um, variable names and types labeled clearly then. If we want to turn this into Java code, uh, we literally just instance the, we create the class, we have our um, fields with these values up here and then we create a couple of methods. So this is what we do. We can see uh, we'd have a public class car there, we'd have all the fields up the top, uh, we would give it a default value if that was necessary. So this one here should have uh, equals 0.0, .0 within it if it's fully consistent with this diagram down here. And then we just define our methods below that. So we can see that the get car price method is expecting a string uh, with a variable name model. And what that does is it returns the value of the car price. It never actually uses that string that we pass into it. So how do we then um, show an association? within this implementation. Well, first I'll show you, uh, I'll show you these two different classes and then how they connect. And essentially when we have an association, um, our object, our car, for example, the relationship owner will appear as a customer object within the car class. The customer, for example, will have a car object within it signifying this relationship here. So let's have a look. So for that relationship, um, we've got our car class as we had before. I've skipped the getters and setters just to make this clearer. And we've got private customer object with a relationship owner, which links directly to that end of the association, that role. Uh, on the other hand, we've got customer, we've got the basic attributes here, and then we've got this private car object car there, which corresponds to that in here. Now you can see I've also included it on here in the customer object, that's not fully necessary. I could absolutely leave out that attribute there because it is clearly shown as part of this association, which is why owner doesn't appear uh, in the attributes of the car class. What happens if we have multiplicities or a directional, a unidirectional relationship? Well, there's actually a bunch of different ways to do this and I'm gonna go through them step by step. So if you have a uh, relationship and it has specific bounds on it, one way of doing this is by using an array. Um, I've called this array vehicles, and to make it clearer, I've included it in the customer class as well, although that's not strictly necessary. Um, what we have here is because it's unidirectional, the car doesn't need to know anything about the customer that owns it. The customer only needs to know about what cars are attached to it, which is why this relationship is um, unidirectional. To implement that, we've got the same class class as we had before. Um, all I've done is I've, I've given it a creator, instructor, sorry. Uh, and then down here, I've created a uh, an array of vehicles, and then I've populated that with a couple of examples, and I've given it a specific maximum length down here. Now, let's say we didn't know um, what the maximum length of that, uh, of the maximum number of cars attached to a customer might be. In that case, we could use a different data type. For example, we could use a set. Um, and a set is a reasonable way of approaching things uh, when you have this kind of uh, zero to infinity multiplicity relationship. We implement it like this. You've probably all seen sets implemented before. Uh, and we just appear it down here. And again, the reason that we don't have customer appearing in the Clark class is just because this is a unidirectional relationship. The next example is that if we have an ordered list, an ordered relationship uh, between two classes, uh, then we'd use an array list, uh, an array list of the object type's car. And this is implemented like this in Java, so almost identical to the, uh, to the set that we saw earlier. And just to summarize, uh, these are the three 
kind of options that you have open to you. Now, of course, you can just use array lists for all of these. There's nothing clearly wrong with that. However, it is often better to, if you have, if you know the previous, if you know the um, the size of a relationship, to use an array. If you don't know the size, but order doesn't matter, to use a set, and only use array list if it really matters. But like I said, you can physically implement all of those relationships using array lists. Um, I just want to throw a couple of other examples in there as well. So uh, we've seen examples of these relationships before. So a uh, one-to-one -one relationship, a one-to-many with an uh, array, uh, a set, um, and then an array list. And one final one is if the relationship requires a key, um, in Python, if you've seen it, this is called a dictionary, um, you can use um, a hash map to map a string, which would be the key here, to an object, a specific object. So that's why that's a zero to one relationship because the key either returns one value or doesn't return a value. In a hash map, you never ever want the key to return more than one values. And that's it. That is how to implement simple um, class diagrams using Java.